Well, greetings again. This is Dr. Bill White with the American Orthodontic Society, and I have a interesting uh, case here, a lady that worked for me for several years, and she had a, a protrusive profile, and her jaw shape, shapes of her jaw were kind of pointed and long, and we wanted to uh, and she also has a temporal mandibular joint problem on top of that. And so we're going to correct that temporal mandibular joint problem and reduce her profile. And I didn't take any teeth out to do it. There's a neat trick here. I wanted to show you uh, how you can do that. Uh, let me get started on it and I'll try to bring these things out as we go along and I'll show you this. A case. Now I'm going to have to use my little deal. Um, she worked for me for several years and she went to work for, she moved to another town and I uh, went to work for an orthodontist there and she knew how to do orthodontics herself. Uh, she's a pretty sharp uh, lady and she was fairly protrusive and she had arches that were long and crowded and pointed like this. And if you want to bring the profile in or the area that in this area in, you can broaden you can broaden these arches out like that. And it's something like if you can see my hands here, you go out this way and the front of it goes in and that it that increases the airway up here as you drop this this is the floor of the nose you see goes out this way and as you do that and we did it with two of these uh, an upper large arch wire we uh, started using those years ago and somebody started calling them big daddy arch wires and that name stuck so uh, we'll just continue to use it then let me show you how we worked with that in this case. It's a very, very interesting uh, case to do and we put, put her in splints at the end of it to keep the jaw in the forward position and we had a daylight, and a, I mean a daytime and a night splint that she uh, wore in here. Now on the right side of her mouth is just almost a perfect class one relationship and this we didn't want to change this, but we're going to bring it out to the side and keep it that way. Now when we come over to the other side, we have a mild class 2 problem over here where this needs, the lower jaw needs to come out and the upper one needs to go back and that'll correct the uh, midline out in the front and we've got an over jet and an over bite of a little more than we needed in this case. And we're not going to take any teeth out. We'll do this with just uh, going in. Now we started this in 1987 and you can follow and she's uh, probably uh, 45 or uh, higher. Maybe I'll have a birthday in here somewhere and show you. 1987. Now this arch goes up and comes back like this and we're going to come over here and widen this out and widen this out and as we go out to the side with it this is going to come back like that and this is the fact if you just go this way with an arch you can reduce if somebody's too protrusive and they want to come back and you don't have to take any teeth if you can if they've got these narrow arches, you can do that. Now let me show you the lower arch. It just looks worse than the upper lower arch looks pretty good. But the lower is very crowded. And you know, several years ago he said if you have crowded lower teeth, you can't, uh, you can't expand them. You can. I've got several videos on that. And one lady, they were so crowded. And we watched her for 10 years and they stayed there and watched her 10 more and they're still there. 
So anyway, we're going to come in here and we'll widen this out and come across maybe not that far in, something like that. And we're going to bring these cuspid teeth back and you need to have the roots distal to the crown and then the teeth don't just migrate back in there. They, for several years here, people were extracting lower teeth out here because they could, thought they could not expand the cuspid. And you can expand lower cuspids and they don't have any sacred position they go to go to. Anyway, you just keep the roots distal to the crown slightly and they don't do that. But if you take some out and just widen them like that and they'll migrate back over the root and they'll crowd back up again. Uh, so watch what we do to the lower arch here as we go through it. So here we widen this out. Now we've got a little problem right down here. We'll have to trim, uh, clean that and keep working on it. Now she, uh, we use these uh, ceramics uh, brackets in the anterior part of the mouth and just regular brackets back in the back. And of course the uh, banded the molar teeth with metal uh, bands here. And we widen that out but we'll, what we widened it with, we're going to show you in just a minute. Uh, now this is the upper arch with a round arch wire in there. And we have to get it where we can put a rectangular arch in here. And now you can come in with this heavy overlay or big daddy arch, pull it in and it's so strong it'll pull this out. But you've got to bring the roots of the teeth out with a crown and so you put buckle root torque in the teeth and you bring it out and the buckle root torque has to come out of the uh, arch wire which would be a rectangular wire where this large wire is just a round wire. Now I hope you don't get too confused on this but you can follow study some of these videos on this. Now she had a TMJ problem, so we had to uh, kind of fill this in as we brought her lower jaw, as these teeth, we straightened these out. You see how much space we had in here, and we had little gaps in here, so we covered these up, and as we brought the jaw out, then we'll bring the posterior teeth, let them erupt up, and when they get up where they take the load, we can take this off right here. You can just cut a groove down the middle of it. That's that uh, soft acrylic and you bond it right to the top of the teeth. So here we are and we've got the midline still off to the side over here uh, working with that. Now this is a little complication uh, here that if you're just barely into orthodontics, uh, I wouldn't tackle a case like this, but once you really learn about it, you can just virtually make the teeth do anything you want them to do uh, and get it correct and make it look better and then hold it that way with retention for a long period of time and where they end up maybe just sleeping with it in the mouth and then go without it during the daytime. Now we advanced her mandible so I had to put a ramp on a, a splint that she wore uh, to keep the jaw in that position. Now <coughs> here are these large wires. Now this large wire is either an 036 uh, round wire or sometimes it, if we need it greater than that, we use an 040 or 40 thousandths. And this is a 36 thousand wire. And you can build this wire to shape it like you want this arch to go to. And then you, after you get it made like you want it, then you expand it out. Now, after you use it a while, you can expand it about a half inch on both sides. And this wire, will carry the teeth out. Now if you don't 
put buccal root torque though in the uh, arch wire, the crown of the tooth. If you move it out here, the roots will stay back over here so that the roof will, will tilt like this and the ling will cusp and we'll be hitting on the bottom. So you have to put buccal root torque if you're going to do any uh, great amount of expansion. And you can expand an adult's case. Uh, I don't care if they're 70 or 80 years old, uh, you can still do it. I've got cases, we've done that, many of them. And uh, you can laterally expand them. Now you won't separate the uh, sutures up here with this. Uh, in fact, you can't, uh, I've not separated the sutures on any body over 40 years old, but we can, uh, we've done 40 year old people, but in there the sutures get too uh, grown together, you can't pull them apart. Uh, now let's see if we can look at this. You take the lower large arch wire and you go out and you bend up the other ends and you tie it between the molars, and if you're going to expand these teeth right here, you would bring this wire out away from those teeth more, and now when you activate it, you bring it in and you, you tie these teeth to it, and the force that's widening this will be working in the bicuspid in the first molar area, and now we've got to bring these teeth, let these teeth come up. We've been advanced it now and we put a layer of acrylic on there so that when she chews the force goes up here it's not right out here on these teeth and on the condyle back in this area it'll be right in the center on those teeth now you let one of the area teeth erupt together and when that takes the force you can take this off right here or take it off and in just a certain amount at a time there. Now there it is on the other side of the mouth. As this this wire is, is going to take these teeth out more than it'll take the molars out. So uh, you can bring it. It'll take the molars also. In fact, it'll wide anything you put it on if you just pull it out there far enough and everything. All right. There is the uh, large wire in there. We make it fit. We just have it fit in there and then you take it and activate it out something like that on each side. You tie one side in and then you come over and you gotta push this one in and tie it in. And now it pushes on all these teeth with the same uh, amount of force. It's steady and you've got to Take your rectangular wire, and I'm going to show you a little bit about, if I can do that, uh, the torque that you put in there. So you've got a tooth sitting in here, something like this, and you'll have another one over here on the other side of the mouth. I'll not draw the roots, uh, but I can and say the roots are up something this way. And we're going to move this tooth to where it's out, where it'll be out here. If we have a bracket in here that's got a slot like that, and uh, that's not a very good slot, but you want to put buccal root torque into this. So in your rectangular wire is, say, sitting like that, and you slip it in there. But what you do here to make these roots go out, we take it and bend that down. Now you put it in here. This this would be, instead of looking straight across like that, it would come down this way, like that. Now you bend that wire up and slip it in here, and it that torque in here makes these roots go in this direction. And the heavy arch wire out here will bring the whole thing out as it brings the roots out. 
if you do not put any buckle root dog and you bring this crown out, the crown's going to move out and the roots will stay pretty much where they are and the root tooth will be angled like that. So when you use this large arch wire, learn how to do the buckle root torque. And you've got to, you've got to do something like this, and with it going up in this area. And if your torque back here in your bracket is straight out like that, and you take a piece of wire, and you come in and you we do progressive root torque. You can catch right behind the cuspid and twist that wire and the, the piece of wire right coming across these molars sometimes will be angled like that. And now you bend that up and slip it in here and it's trying to do the tooth this way. That's, you've bent this down and it wants to go back in that direction. You put it in this slot and the tooth is going to rotate at this point here. And these roots will move over here and you're bringing the crown out at the same time. If the crown gets out past the roots, then put more torque and less lateral pressure on the big daddy wire and you can bring, you can move these teeth from one side to the other and keep the root structure going with the crowns like this. Now this is uh, this is not first grade orthodontics. Now this is you got to learn a little bit about it. If you really learn how to use the big daddy archways, you can expand anybody's arch. I don't care how old they are, or where they're living, or what kind of person they are. It'll it'll expand them. Now let's go back and uh, see if we can get going with this. So now we're, we've widened this a good bit already. Now here we advanced it and we were biting on these and I had to put something in here to take the load, keep it off of the condyles and then you take one tooth, let it erupt up, up and when it gets where it can do the support you can take, start reducing these blocks right here, but you need to keep the force in here. If you have any deep bite, you move out and bite on your front teeth out here, then these teeth don't touch at all, see? And so your load is on the condyles up here, and the little disc in between there is taking all this load. And you have to have greater force Back here, to get 10 pounds of force in the front, you need, you know, you need to put 20 or 30 pounds of force back in this area. Uh, that's, uh, I, I, I know you, I may scare some of you off of them doing stuff like that, but you can do it uh, if you learn it. Now here is the way the uh, Big Daddy Arch was brought down and we tied it here. And so it's bringing these teeth out, and then your regular arch wire is bringing the ones in the back. This goes out. If you have a problem here, you have to bend your upper, uh, upper second molar. And this wire here would be out here somewhere, and this one would be out about a half inch. And uh, it'll bring the whole thing out. And we put these blocks in here to have them chew back here, and, and we release this tooth to erupt together. When it gets to taking the load up, then you can start taking this acrylic down in front. Now there's the uh, heavy arch wire on both upper and lower, and you can see how the lower one comes over, drop it down, and this is, uh, it looks confusing, but if you learn how to do this, uh, and I've shown you in one of these other videos, we, you've got to tie your arch wires back, so we put this old mega in here, and you tie that back uh, and keep the arch wire tied back when you're doing this. Now here it is, looking at it from the side, uh, blown up. This is an old three, 
I think it's an O three O uh, three six wire right here. And if you want to bring it out and heat treat it, it gives it even more force. And I've tied right between the two teeth here and your regular arch wire is going. So here we raise this tooth with this arch wire and we raise this one too. And that picks that tooth up and brings it into contact. Then we can reduce this block across this area. Now there we go. All right, so we finish here and we've got her pretty well lined up. The midline's still off just a hair right there. And we're going to, we have broadened both arches, you see, and we brought our profile in and I put an upper retainer with a ramp on it. And I'll show you that again. And then we're in a class one relation on both sides. This is the right side. We stayed, we kept the class one relation as we expanded this and this down here. And we expanded the lower anterior a great deal. You know, the same, we're just almost exactly, uh, we're still a little class two issue, here, but not, not very much. And here is the upper retainer with a small ramp right here. There's the lower teeth fit into that. And she'll need to wear this until her mouth adapts to this new position. Now this is 1990 and that was 87, I think, 80, some, somewhere in 87. So we worked on her for two years and over, over two years a little bit in getting to this point. Now there is the upper arch uh, and here is the lower arch. And we put this little uh, bonded from three to three on there. She takes care of that. And here is her profile. We brought it back straight. And uh, this is from the anterior portion. And this is from straight on. And you can see the thing. Now here are these. This is 92 and it was 87, I believe, when we started. And see how straight these are. This tooth here, we cleaned it and worked on it and kind of bent the, got the root in here with a little torque and the little gum structure looks good around it. Looking at this side and the other side. There is the retainer that we have in and we'll have and this is the night retainer. It has a large ramp out here. She can't bring her jaw back when she's got this. It'll go, she go, chews in here, and that holds it. And she, she wears that at night until it gets adapted to the condyles and the uh, gonadal angle in here straight, uh, straighten out. That's the way we bring the lower jaw forward. And there is the ramp with the retainer in the upper arch. You can see she bites down here, but if she bites too, this will slide her jaw forward and fit in that position. Now I'm on, I think we've got some uh, start and finish. This is 92 on the bottom. And here is uh, the lady after we have finished uh, the case. And this is 87, 9 of 87, so it's, uh, it took about two and a half years, I think, we worked on her and got her in there. Now this is the finish, this is, this is 96, showing you that this held up and it stayed. The cuspids are kind of coming back a little bit back in this area and they stay there. And they are still there on her. I know her well. And here it is in 87. And there it is in 96. There is 87. And there is 96. So this went back into a good class one relation. Here is the upper arch. You see how big it is right here. 
And you see how this one is more narrow. This width across here and across here is a good bit bigger. And that, you take it and you back to her face and it gives her more airway and a greater space in there for the airway. The ramp holds the uh, jaw forward and she won't have to wear that forever. It'll get out there and finally stay. Now here is the lower jaw. Look how crowded this is right in here. And then see that same thing over here. And this is 96 and this is 87. That's nine years different. And it's still there. Now she takes care of her teeth and everything. We didn't do any uh, extraction or anything on it. And we got rid of the TMJ problem by advancing the mandible. Uh, the little of the enamel's chipped right there, but this is bonded on and stays, and this is holding up. So this is about nine years after we started the case. And here she is again, and that's uh, the end of it. So I'm going to uh, say uh, <laughs> goodbye for the time being, but stay with our uh, website and everything and uh, we want you to subscribe to it if you will and we are trying to teach good orthodontics good solid orthodontics all anywhere in the world where you see this and you can study these videos we have over 600 maybe getting close to 700 videos and you can pull one subject up over here and touch in at the end and you can pull up the videos that have stuff related to that subject in them. So thanks for watching and I want to hush up here and I'll close it out and we'll hope to see you again. Now, let me get over here and stop this.